Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Rex, for the introduction. Um, members of the board attend you via closed captioning today. with you an overview of our elementary consortium program through the SWRC. Now before we begin, I would like to ask you to imagine, okay? Imagine a program in which all the stakeholders are collaborating in synchrony. All the stakeholders share a purpose. They see, they understand, and they share their mission. They say, why are we here? Why are we working together? That is exactly what we have tried to do over at the elementary consortium program over the past three years. Now, we have engaged in a transformational change. Our program not only targets um, increasing our student outcomes, but it focuses on increasing the collaboration with our stakeholders, because we realize that without the supports, the student outcomes would not be possible. So we engaged in a transformational change over the past three years, and we promote research-based practices. One of the things that we do is we focus on providing instruction within the least restrictive environment to the highest degree possible. Now we understand that our collaborations are key. So currently within the Yuma district, we service approximately five neighboring school districts. Out of those five neighboring school districts, we have 12 students currently enrolled within ele our elementary consortium. And our number distribution has been charted for you across the various grade levels. Now at Desert Mesa, we believe that the outcomes of tomorrow are dependent upon the foundation we build today. So one of the ways in which we do that at our consortium program is we empower our students. We empower our students to be accountable for their own education, and we encourage them to be active participants in their educational programs. One of the ways in which we do that is we provide rigorous and intensive inclusionary academic programs. So we bring the supports to our students. At the, collabor or, excuse me, at the consortium program, we have the flexibility of working in conjunction within the general education settings to know what these types of supports look like. Now the children who attend our consortium program share several characteristics. These are the children that require either daily or almost daily access to service support providers, whether that be a teacher of the deaf, a sign language interpreter, or a paraprofessional. These are the children who need constant monitoring with their equipment. And these are the children who just require additional services, or the children who are exhibiting adverse impacts as their results of their hearing loss. So pro um, service provision within the consortium looks very different for every child. What you will see is that we have some of our students receiving a combination of push in and pull out services. We have students who receive um, services primarily through a push-in approach. And we have students who are pulled out for purposes of reteaching or pre-teaching. So the service provision within our consortium program, we have the flexibility of tailoring our program to meet the child. We do not make the child meet our program. Desert Mesa, the elementary consortium, it's currently located at Desert Mesa Elementary through Yuma District 1 and we focus on providing a multicultural perspective. So our program is embedded within the heart of the school. We are not visitors on campus. We are part of the community and we're part of that culture. We provide a lot of awareness activities throughout the school year. So our program provides professional development not only for our staff, but for the students' peers as well. So a lot of the professional development that we provide focuses on site-specific needs. Now we also focus on self-advocacy because we have the vision of empowering our students for future outcomes. So the only way in which we're able to do that is by providing our students with the necessary tools now. So the students within our consortium program help us um, for their paraprofessionals and their service providers keep track of their progress. So they're responsible for monitoring some of their data, they're responsible for presenting their IEP and for collaborating towards their needs and their goals. What are they going to be working towards? And access is our primary focus. How do we provide equitable access and equitable opportunities for these children within their grade levels? Now, as you can see here, or 
um, Consortium Program participates through the Galileo district-wide assessments. We have charted for you how we ended in the 2015-2016 school year, how we ended in the 2016-2017 school year, and how we are right now as of December. If you see on the far left side of the spectrum, we see MP for minimally proficient, and on the far right of the spectrum, we see E for exceeds. And if you notice, at the end of 2016-2017 school year, we were already starting to see a shift. We started to see a paradigm shift from moving our students from being the majority on the minimally proficient to moving into the proficient and now even the highly proficient or the exceeds. The results you see here are particularly for the areas of ELA and mathematics. Now because we have a leadership that supports innovation and they support risk taking, we have a safe environment in which we can take different approaches to our education. So we have a lot of initiatives. Um, today I will be talking to you about two of the program initiatives that we have of our consortium program. The first one is our listening and our spoken language initiative. As part of the resources that were provided to you on the second tab, you will find um, a copy of our action plan for listening and spoken language, as well as two teacher tools that we have provided for our SWRC teachers. At the consortium program, we believe that language should be child-centered and not method-centered. So we support our families in their journey. Um, these are the various tools that you were provided with in your packet. Um, now within the consortium, we've had the opportunity of implementing this initiative since the previous school year. Um, out of the five children that participated within this initiative, we have been able to move four of those children into at least one tassel level higher than when they started. Our consortium program places a high focus on family involvement. One of, the, one of the things we wanted to do in conjunction with the ASDB survey that has been provided, we wanted to focus on the parents' understanding of the IEP process. We wanted to know how parents felt um, as part of the team because our agency-wide um, strategic planning encouraged us to be accountable, collaborative, and transparent. So we wanted to know how do parents feel when they come to those meetings? What can we do to make the experience better for them? So parents were provided with a survey that measured the six different areas that you see on the chart, which were implementation, communication, purpose, process, climate, and satisfaction. Parents were provided with a rating scale of one to five, five being highly satisfied and one being unsatisfied. So if you see here, um, we received pretty good ratings. Um, we were very excited with that, but we, we don't want to stop there. We want to say, we want to take it a step further and say, what do we do now with these numbers? How can we make it better for these families? So again, as part of the resources that were provided, um, on your third tab, you will see a more detailed report of this survey, some of the response rates, and what we're doing um, as a program to take this a step further. Now, um, I would like to end my presentation with a quote that was provided um, to us by one of our families. And Ms. Alcantar mentions, I like how SWRC Elementary Consortium Program focuses not only on the educational aspect of the programming, but also on the child's well-being. As a family, we feel included in each step of the educational program. Um, within the next few days, you will also be receiving a link to a video that our IT department is helping us put together, um, in which you will see where we surveyed a couple of our students attending the program and say, what do you like about this program? What makes it special for you? And you will also see two parent interviews giving us some feedback in regards to our program. So again, my name is Melissa Velasquez. Thank you for having me here, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for the presentation. That was fabulous. Anybody have any questions or comments? I just had, uh, this is Mike Manley. 
Just one quick question about the the uh, the LSL component that we're discussing. How is that curriculum um, chosen, and how how is that done? our students when they come to us so we utilize the teacher assessment of spoken language and we get a baseline and as a result of the trainings that not only our agency in conjunction with also the speech department that sounds great what else this is mark sims i just want to let you know i joined the call thank, thank you. you thank you you can take over <laughs> 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 okay, um, moving, pardon, ready to move on to 1.03, call to the public. We have no public comments that we know about. Oh. Okay, then we will uh, start with business services, <coughs> Richard. Members of the board, Superintendent um, Reichman, um, you have my report uh, before you. It's really leadership, and I'd be glad to answer any questions, or if anybody has any questions about anything on the report, if you've got some pain, but that always feels good when you're done with it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We, I, I do want to say that we have um, some good initiatives coming up in the that we needed to, but um, we have some good things that are happening that will hopefully um, help uh, programs like you just saw. What's your comments for Richard? Um, did we get those? Hey, this is you. my family again. I'm sorry. We got, did we get those no. six new buses? Oh, well, uh, we have the budget for this year. Um, we, we, we know... If I heard the question correctly, have we received order? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we did get an allocation for buses, and Terry's ordered buses. So he okay. typically takes care of that, yes. Thank you, Richard. Okay. Uh, next will be human services. Anita. Good afternoon, Board President Sims, members of the board, Superintendent Reichman, and Dr. Rex. In your packet, I um, our employees and what it looks like for our recruiting initiatives. At this time, I'd like to open myself up. Any questions for Anita? Uh, the next will be information technology, Paul Creasy. Good afternoon, uh, Board President Sims, members of the board. Uh, end of year report. Um, and plans on moving forward uh, um, into the summer. It's our busy season in summer to get a lot of the work done. Um, but at this point, Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Superintendent uh, Reichman. In keeping with supporting agency-wide initiatives and providing you a review of the 2017 year, the cooperatives at the Tucson campus and the directors for the deaf and blind programs submitted new and ongoing practices and initiatives that were completed in 2017, turning agency-wide, building leadership capacity, building our learning capacity, and building our resource capacity. Accreditation in the fall they will continue implementing the operating principles of ACT, accountability, collaboration, and courses. ASDB currently serves 2,098 students in their site-based regional cooperatives and their birth incident children needs are being net met around the state. As we look to the future, we know that 2018 will become a new place for regional directors. For the instruction that you heard about earlier from Ms. Velasquez and le learning how to serve specialized curriculum, materials, and equipment by the Arizona Department of Education based upon academic outcomes to be eligible to apply for and receive grants to develop. If what you had the opportunity to read from our submission that I apologize was lengthy but important, 
Um, you had an opportunity to see some of the incredible things. So get ready for tw 2018 because we're taking ASDB to an all-new level. Do you have any questions? Good information in that, <laughs> that packet. <laughs> we are a big group. And I think. Okay. Next will be Ryan, media and communication. Um, board members, I submitted to you my the 2017 year in review <clears throat> under MNC. The first story was, you know, we increased by a factor of four, and so in a couple of years we were able to turn that around to 5.2 million positive impressions last year. We became the first state agency in all of Arizona to make its website 100% ADA compliant, seeking Mr. Moya's guidance. Um, both within the state and also schools for the deaf outside of our live stream manager Nick going tonight um, he successfully accomplished a 99.3 percent uh, many video projects support for the schools things like that so we're very proud of that the fourth is industry standard on participation rates by two to three fold uh, what you normally find in the private sector for response rates for consumers so for the tremendous job they've done last year. At this time, I'd like to open this up to any questions you may have. Comments? Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Good afternoon, Board President Sims, members of the board, Superintendent Reichman. Um, first, we have a building at uh, Phoenix campus called TCTC, which I out and evaluate the building. <clears throat> they uh, have done a contractor who hired an engineer to design the uh, fixes. Um, up to the transportation department for our first uh, quarterly newsletter. Um, hope you enjoy. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments? And last but not least. We have the superintendent's report. <laughs> Annette? Yeah, can you all hear me okay? Okay, so I have two primary points to my presentation and that I need to make. So, but I wanted to start it off with, as you know, my first year as a superintendent, I spent a lot of time trying to understand what it is we do here. My second year here, we've really been focusing on building. Um, you know, sometimes we don't know if we're actually successful in building trust, and sometimes I'm not sure relationships. Well, it turns out last Tuesday, just two days ago, I had a meeting here in uh, I think about 10 people come in for that from the community on a Tuesday morning. They took the time to come in. That's it we are doing here, um, to have that level of interest. And then for me to that light was obviously, I talked about the early childhood family education program, the ECFE, the possibility of it, um, that generated a whole bunch of questions. They wanted to know, so how many more teachers will you be hiring? how we were going to do this. They were so invested in our success that they took a half hour, state legislature and all of that. So we're providing that information. I will give a similar presentation tomorrow to, that I shared with them. As I talked about what um, Dr. Rex just briefly mentioned and what's later meant from the Arizona Department of Education. And the reason that we are applying for that grant is because we're rating our schools as Ds. And part of that is because our schools, the three schools we had, form along with the bottom 5% of schools throughout the state. So that's the reason why we can apply for this if we don't achieve certain outcomes in three years. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
Um, but I share that information with them. One part is the curriculum, but a lot of thanks to Will. You need to make sure you pick here. You need to make sure they're individualized. Uh, we need to be very mindful about the curriculum we choose. They would be that invested in what we're doing here. And as part of that conversation, it was like, well, we want a town hall. Okay, we can do that. So we will be setting up town halls with the deaf community and the blind community here. I had to run to the next meeting. The final comment that I got was one gentleman just looked at me sharing with us these exciting things that are going on. ASDB is finally starting to move forward. And trust was lost. It's now being rebuilt. It's now being regained. Um, and thanks to you for that feedback, I have to say that I was very touched to receive it. But it's good to hear that we are trust. We're really going to be able to get at the problem solving and the innovation that needs to go on. Agents talk about building trust. One part of it is that transparency, is that accountability. We build trust. Is that okay? How do we know that our students are graduating? college and career will be. What kind of data do you need, do we need, and how do we do that? Well, one, and the goal and the intent to do this annually from here on out is in, as you said, attempted to put together some of the data and to present it in a way that you, we, oh, sorry, take this, and look at it and read it, comprehend it, and use the state of the agency. Well, we want to know enrollment number, enrollment chart in here, and you can see pretty quickly where the students are, where we are providing service. We also have the AZ merit scores, that first sheet that says agency wide. This is really, and this provides a percentage of our students who are passing the AD merit, the, the percentages. And this is the reason why we are eligible to be able to apply for getting grants. We're trying to get additional data from ADE. We have one year's worth of, if you flip the page, all up three quarters of our students are out in the co-ops in the state. Um, and last year we were able to get those numbers. But it would give us some comparison and we could see trends going into the future. Jay Johnson put together post-school outcomes. That means what happens to our students look at ASDB versus Arizona. You can see very quickly that we are all, what do I mean by that? Well, it measures three different things. The percentage of students who, after they graduate, are in person, and the percentage of students who are doing nothing. And when you look at the percentage of those students who are doing from 38% down to 30%. So they're telling us our transition specialists, students after they graduate, and to prepare them for life after graduation. So that probably is the best me. Really, really interested in your feedback. As you read it, kind of mull it over and think about, well, next year to you and that you think would be benefit to everyone else. Um, so I want to hear from you. This, to me, I have to offer to you and to the public here. So before I'm about this. Um, yes, I'd like to make a comment. This is Shelly. Go Hello. ahead, Shelly. Thank you, Grant, that you're receiving. What does that cover? I have a presentation very soon. It's on the agenda. I have two people here who will provide that information. So if you don't. 
Okay. Okay. Um, I have to leave at five, so I'll, I can always follow up later. Thank you. Is way behind. I was Ryan. Maybe he can check into that and try to get it caught up. To Thank you, Shelly. Uh, this is Mike Manley. Um, I want to thank you, Annette, for the forefront of making this kind of data real and usable. Um, and, you know, congratulations for the PSO data, is to see where we're at and then digest that and figure out how we can improve the outcomes for I don't know how, what the plan is to make changes based on that data, but that's an incredibly powerful tool to use. Mark Sims, I want to thank you for all that data. I know it's been a lot of work, and uh, it's all of the presentations really show how far the agency is. percentage of students we're servicing out in the co-op, what are we going to be able to do to represent those, pay those students? We actually have started working on that. We are asking the individual schools, the Early Childhood Family Education Program profile. Um, the regional co-op just yesterday had a meeting and today. To, so we are working on that. I don't know how quick the turnaround will be. They are part of our advanced debt accreditation, so our agency-wide accreditation. Okay, so that's the other reason why we are doing the agency profile uh, the accreditation. As you know, we're applying for an agency-wide advanced ad accreditation available for the board by the July board meeting, perhaps. We can make that Okay, this I have- This is Lynn. I do have one comment. And I want to tell you that of, of people in Tucson, and they brought up the word trust. That is fabulous. It's a All right. I do have a few announcements that I quickly need to share with you. Um, the first announcement is of Desert Valley region, and so that is Justin Rice. Her last day with us will be on March 9th three regional directors, and that is for DVR, for the North Central Regional Center, and for the Eastern Highland. You all know this, but we have Governor Ducey coming to visit Phoenix Day School for the Deaf next week, Wednesday. Um, awesome. So, and the same day that we have the visit from Governor Ducey, we also have Wednesday is going to be a very busy day for us. The third thing that I wanted to just mention, a request from me at some point in time to call a special board meeting, probably mid, we have two things that will be on the agenda for that. Um, the first thing will be are and have them ready for you to sign. That's the first thing. Maybe, maybe not. But the second thing is that with the school, and we will be selecting curriculum and materials. We have to have your approval for that. So that means call it specifics at this point. And that concludes my report. Any questions? Disappointed to know that I now have access to board doc. Yes. But, uh, I'd like to continue on nonetheless. One consent agenda items, approval of the consent agenda items. Do we have a motion? I second that, that's Lynn. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, information item, introduction of the Comprehensive Support and Improvement Grant. That was uh, what uh, Superintendent Reichman was referring to. And Principals at both ASDB Tucson and PDSD. I'll be turning it over at this time to our PL, two of our PL. 
Well, good evening, members of the board. board documents. Uh, we gave you a, a relatively brief write-up of the grant and, and what it's eligible for, and so we'll be going over that. SD, we've been identified, those two schools have been identified as being in Title I uh, school improvement. It's opened up in December. We have to have that in by the end of, the, of this month if we're going to apply for it. If we apply for the planning grant, then we're following two grants. That's kind of the gate that we have to go through in order to access the other two. If we decide we don't want to apply for um, a lot of resources that we need in order to improve academic achievement at both of those schools. Uh, one of the technology or out-of-state travel, um, any funds that we write in that grant have to directly apply to what root cause analysis. ADE um, has a fantastic process to get down to that root cause analysis. Uh, we've been working with the we have done kind of the five whys, it's a process to get to the root cause, also done fishbone di diagrams, uh, met with them asking, well, why is that occurring? Why is this occurring? It comes down to three items. First one, we really can uh, with the resources that they have, but they're having to adapt those really on their own to try to meet uh, the needs of the student tool. And then we can start building on that curriculum when it comes to things like accommodations and modifications for our children. Who, um, when kids act out, what do we have in place for everybody? And then when it's not working, what do we then add on? Second is the lack of data. Um, we, we really don't have a lot of, of data. We're relying on a, a medical analogy. That's more like autopsy data. After the fact, you're seeing you know, what happened. And we can't have data here. Um, that lack of data also hurts our IEP teams in us really understanding uh, what can our child do. Um, how are we ensuring that the current, our current schedule and resources are truly maximizing our resources as the teachers that we currently have? What's the best way to maximize that? Um, the school day schedule, I believe, has been pretty static for a while. So the three root causes boils down to curriculum, data, and then those resources, making sure that all of our resources are aligned. Get a drink of water real quick. <laughs> uh, and go through the end of this fiscal year, which would be June, with curriculum. Um, we believe that if we take a top-down approach and basically anoint, here's a curriculum, and there's more buy-in um, out of the gate, and we think that that's going to carry, carry forward. Uh, what we're currently doing, and I'll give a shout out, they currently use. So that those are items that we'll be bringing to the table to start to sort through um, and see if that's anything that we want to adopt. The academic curriculum, which will be, we'll start with ELA curriculum, the English language arts. We'll also be bringing teachers together to look at a and come in and to look at the best way to schedule the schools would be the, big, the biggest bang for the buck. Um, when you start talking about you come in, um, it's, it, it becomes kind of like an LSAT question. Of you, have, you have all these outside company come in who can run all that through an algorithm and give different kind of a, a ideas of is that once we choose the curriculum to start providing PD, uh, for the teachers to be trained on that. So at the beginning of the school, on the, on the following page, you see that there's the implementation grant. That would be the one that takes it from identifying where that ELA curriculum isn't working for our kids and then adding interventions to that. At the same time, then we... Along with the process for looking at curriculum, one of the things that we noticed, there was not a system in place, a system in place to, to do this review. And so once we want to make sure that the things that we're developing within the center in, um, that we came up with a root cause analysis, it wasn't just something that we, we grabbed out of the air, but there was a comprehensive need E that said these are some specific six specific areas we want you to look at and within those areas if you don't have production you must address it in this grant so um, like I said some of these things were not just um, things that we came up with on and if we move on in that final year you can kind of see the the system that's moving that final year additional interventions um, accommodations modification as needed because at that point at least we have something to build on and we can steadily uh, keep adding to that based on the children that we have. We feel that by taking then increase the academic outcomes. Uh, we also think we know, and we know the, the children that attend PDSD, ASD, and ASB, they're not cookie cutter. They're not even close. So we continue to collect data and say what's the best for this child, what's the best for this child, but right now it's difficult for the print. Um, 
at the end, we have kind of the due dates that are listed. I mentioned it. Uh, it does require the board president's signature before we submit it. Uh, the planning grant would then be awarded that is on May 30th. And again, that does need the signature from the board president. Our English, English language arts and our mathematics scores on the AZ merit. Um, we are in a group of schools saying the same. It is moving as we're moving. And um, what will happen is we will be in improvement for a mandatory where we are. If we are out of that bottom 5%, then we have two years of where they're tracking our progress. We have to con so it's a period of four years total. If after the end of that second year, we're not out of school improvement, we will continue. ADE will take a more active role in assisting us with um, raising our student achievement. Gordon? <coughs> I have a question, Ms. Sally. Yes. We're in the bottom 5% talking about um, does this mean preschool through 12th grade? Through 12th grade, and at this time, it is only PDSD and ASD by the state for improvement. And so if okay. for in, in the state of Arizona, we are identified as in the bottom 5% of Arizona schools, of those schools that uh, take federal title dollars. Okay. Um, so have we already started the application process for the, to, to receive that grant? Extensive work on trying to meet this first deadline of January 31st for the first grant, the first of the three. And I do agree with what Warren said about having the teachers meet and look over the curriculum. Uh, President Sims, I need to excuse myself and I will see you all at the next time. Okay, thank you very much. Um, my question is, um, you mentioned that the census is so small for um, blind school. That we're going to bring them alongside of the other two schools with our Title I monies and our idea on what we're learning and what we're doing as well, even though it will be out of the scope of ADE's monitoring on this particular project. Okay, acceptable to stakeholders, et cetera. Uh, and it seemed from the report, and actually I think in maybe uh, Dr. Rex or, or Annette yours, and, and I don't understand that piece. Uh, you know, I can understand low scores when, when you don't have a curriculum that's that, that carrying the blind alongside kind of thing. How does that work with a blind curriculum? Okay. so. And I'm going to focus on the you know, the Arizona academic standards, mm -hmm. um, which our students are are tested against when it comes to the AZ merit. So when we're looking at our teachers are teaching the content that eventually is going to be tested that in place. So it's really the teachers um, kind of have a pacing guide based on beyond textbooks that they can use are at grade level, which a lot of our kids aren't. And the teachers are really up to their own devices to try to figure out how do we modify the teachers out there. We can purchase, and these are things that the group looking at the curriculum would have to decide on, but a lot of curriculum does have it's at a different level. Um, when it comes to making accommodations for students who are blind or for students who are deaf, for this grant, for purchases, so those are the kind of things that would have to come after the fact. How do we make these things accessible to our children who would be the things that we'd be adding on top of that? Um, but if we have a curriculum in place that is aligned to college, well, right now, and, and I, don't, I don't want to make it sound like I'm blaming the teachers at all or even the principals, um, a lot of resources to where it's going to be easier for them to adapt these materials and kind of have that sequence of where they need to go. Basically, it does. Um, just as a follow-up real quickly, David, just, I'll finish this. Uh, how many schools are in that 5% of the uh, That shows all the schools that are, are in. I honestly haven't looked at that because I've just been concerned about ASDB <laughs> per school. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I can get you that information. I, just, I don't have that off the top okay. of my, my head. Um, I, did, uh, I did my best to try to use my Jedi powers to get them to, to show their <laughs> hand on that when we were in the training with them. But what one of them, what one of the specialists did mention to me 
is that it could be that a larger district already has a lot of things they have to do. Right. In other cases, which I would put us in, there's quite, you know, there's kind of been a 10 year lapse in a lot of dollar oh, yeah. amount. I understand, they'll negotiate it, okay. Yeah. And, and to add to that, we sat with ADE for about three, three and a half hours based on need. And so we were encouraged by that. So the, the principles and, and the process has been very strategic to support us get what we need to, to implement. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is, this is David Nigro. Uh, whatever the curriculum is chosen for uh, ASD and PDSD, which, um, will a new curricula be, or curriculum be chosen for ASB as well? I mean, in other, in other words, is the way that we're going to address uh, Correct. So, I mean, all, all of our schools are lacking a, a curriculum. So in kind of paralleling this with what we're doing with the two schools and improvement that we qualify for the grant or it's too low for the AZ merit scores to be published? Both. It's, it's both. So we yeah. know the AZ merit score. Because in the if you have only one student in a particular grade level, it would be identifiable to that score as to who that, who that kiddo is. So but Comparable? Uh, to, to the, the results from ASD? In other words... Um, I that um, Annette shared with you, the, the comprehensive data packet. Um, there's the results in that similar um, across the board. And with one other thing, with our behavior program, the behavior program is going to be um, one of the only co extra costs that we're going to have, like I said, that will be absorbed through Title I and IDEA funds. We'll be having those staff paying them for scheduling and, and so on. So the only additional costs that we're going to have to come up with, and like I said, we have it in those other two grants, will be the curriculum itself. Um, in the spreadsheet, it seems like it displays everything as just ASDB. It doesn't seem to distinguish between... ASB and ASD, is that, is that correct? Each okay. of so those schools has a separate uh, ENI, or yeah, ENI, EIN number, so they're all considered separate entities. Okay. Uh, not, not our call. Right, uh, understood. And when we're talking and we're writing another planning grant for PDSD, because each of them qualified on their own, and the same thing with implementation. This is Mark Sims. Is there any uh, thought of extending these that that's a, an interesting question I would assume that the majority of the schools that we're working with uh, at the curricula and I think some of the supports that we build on top of it for students who are curricula I think would be a huge asset to um, to all of our well wouldn't we be able to differentiate between corpus general knowledge or teaching blind kids how to go across the street and things like that so the point would be that would apply to the co-op. DE is asking us to look into is in math and language arts. And so it's going to be based um, proven curriculum. And so when you get that's not something that is an allowable cost um, to purchase or um, enhance our programs with this particular curriculum period, it would seem outside of the grant there should be a pressing need to have a comprehensive curriculum in that you said, that's not a question for you to answer. Actually, that's a discussion for us to have uh, amongst the board and amongst the administration. And uh, one thing to address this, you know, this grant isn't going to be a silver bullet for everything that we start shoring up, how we're teaching English language arts, mathematics, and science. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other uh, curriculum won't be with this these grant funds that we can't address them. Those would be you know things like IDEA funds uh, come to mind as to ways that we could. I get it. Thank you. Uh, perhaps this is David Nigro. Perhaps this is for uh, the accommodations that uh, are included when they take the AZ merit exam. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you very much. That was wonderful to sign the application. Thank you. So Thank you. We're, we're going to go on to 5.01, introductory discussion of policies as listed on the agenda. I'm sorry. Um, this is Annette. 
speaking. I don't think Maria Murphy is with us at this point. Item 5.03, information item, agency outputs and privilege update. That has me as the person updating. You're still here. Okay. Would you like to? Oh, um, well, sure. Oh. Um, we have spoken to three our positives and there are concerns with all of them. Um, like if possible um, to discuss maybe more extensively in an executive session. That we would have to agendize for the next meeting. Sure that we need to agendize the executive session as opposed to vote to go into it in a pre agendized uh, item. Well, I, I believe that's already set up, uh, Mr. President. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Y yeah, well, if okay. we, yeah. So, so, so we can make a motion. Uh, and employment decisions uh, related there too. Okay. Somebody want to second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, ARS. Yes, please. 38-431.03A1. Uh, the Board of Directors may vote to go into executive relates to agenda item. Thank you.
making sure that all of our resources are aligned. Let me get a drink of water real quick. <laughs> uh, and go through the end of this fiscal year, which would be June, with curriculum. Um, we believe that if we take a top-down approach and basically anoint, here's a curriculum and more buy-in um, out of the gate, and we think that that's going to carry, carry forward. Uh, what we're currently doing, and I'll give a shout out, they currently use. So that those are items that we'll be bringing to the table to start to sort through um, and see if that's anything that we want to adopt. Academic curriculum, which will be, we'll start with ELA curriculum, the English language arts. We'll also be bringing teachers together to look at a and come in and to look at the best way to schedule the schools would be the, big, the biggest bang for the buck. Um, when you start talking, you come in, um, it's, it, it becomes kind of like an LSAT question of you have, you have all the outside company come in who can run all that through an algorithm and give different kind of a, a ideas of what is that once we choose the curriculum to start providing PD uh, for the teachers to be trained on that. So at the beginning of the screen, on the, on the following page, you see that there's the implementation grant. That would be the one that takes it from identifying where that ELA curriculum isn't working for our kids and then adding interventions to that. At the same time, then we... Along with the process for looking at curriculum, one of the things that we noticed, there was not a system in place to a system in place to, to do this review. And so once we want to make sure that the things that we're developing within the center in, um, that we came up with a root cause analysis, it wasn't just something that we, we grabbed out of the air, but there was a comprehensive need e that said, these are some specific, six specific areas we want you to look at. And within those those areas, if you don't have instruction, you must address it in this grant. So, um, like I said, some of these things were not just um, things that we came up with on. And if we move on in that final year, you can kind of see the, the system that's moving. That final year, additional interventions, um, accommodations, modification as needed, because at that point, at least we have something to build on and we can steadily uh, keep adding to that based on the children that we have. We feel that by taking the and increase the academic outcomes, uh, we also think, we know, and we know, the, the children that attend PDSD, ASD, and ASB, they're not cookie cutter. They're not even close. So we continue to collect data and say, what's the best for this child? What's the best for this child? But right now, it's difficult for the print. Um, at the end, we have kind of the due dates that are listed. I mentioned it. Uh, it does require the board president's signature before we submit it. Uh, the planning grant would then be awarded that is on May 30th, and again, that does need the signature from the board president. Our English, English language arts and our mathematics scores on the AZ merit. Um, we are in a group of schools saying the same. It is moving as we're moving. And um, what will happen is we will be in improvement for a mandatory where we are. If we are out of that bottom 5%, then we have two years of where they're tracking our progress. We have to condone, so it's a period of four years total. If after the end of that second year, we're not out of school improvement, we will continue. ADE will take a more active role in assisting us with um, raising our student achievement. Gordon. <coughs> I have a question, Excuse me. Sally. Yes. We're in the bottom 5% talking about, um, does this mean preschool through 12th grade? Through 12th grade, and at this time, it is only PDSD and ASD at a state for improvement. And so if okay. for in, in the state of Arizona, we are identified as in the bottom 5% of Arizona schools, of those schools that uh, take federal title dollars. Okay. Um, so have we already started the application process for the, to, to receive that grant? We have extensive work on trying to meet this first deadline of January 31st for the first grant, the first of the three. And I do, agree with what Warren said about having the teachers meet and look over the curriculum 
President Sims, I need to excuse myself, and I will see you all at the next time. Okay, thank you very much. Um, my question is, um, you mentioned that the census is so small for um, blind school. That we're going to bring them alongside of the other two schools with our Title I monies and our ID on what we're learning and what we're doing as well, even though it will be out of the scope of ADE's monitoring on this particular project. Okay. Acceptable to stakeholders, et cetera. Uh, and it seemed from the report, and actually I think in maybe uh, Dr. Rex or, or Annette Yers, and, and I don't understand that piece. Uh, you know, I can understand low scores when, when you don't have a curriculum that's that, that carrying the blind alongside kind of thing. How does that work with a blind curriculum? Okay. So, and I'm going to focus on the, you know, the Arizona academic standards, mm -hmm. um, which our students are, are tested against when it comes to the AZ merit. So when we're looking at our teachers are teaching the content that eventually is going to be tested that in place. So it's really the teachers um, kind of have a pacing guide based on beyond textbooks that they can use are at grade level, which a lot of our kids aren't. And the teachers are really up to their own devices to try to figure out how do we modify the teachers out there. We can purchase, and these are things that the group looking at the curriculum would have to decide on, but a lot of curriculum does have us at a different level. Um, when it comes to making accommodations for students who are blind or for students who are deaf for this grant for purchases, so those are the kind of things that would have to come after the fact. How do we make these things accessible to our children who will be the things that we'd be adding on top of that? Um, but if we have a curriculum in place that is aligned to college, well, right now, and, and I, don't, I don't want to make it sound like I'm blaming the teachers at all or even the principals, um, a lot of resources to where it's going to be easier for them to adapt these materials and kind of have that sequence of where they need to go. Basically, it does. Um, just as a follow-up real quickly, Dave, just I'll finish this. Uh, how many schools are in that 5% of, of the page? That shows all the schools that are, are in. I honestly haven't looked at that because I've just been concerned about ASDB <laughs> per school. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I can get you that information. I, just, I don't have that off the top okay. of my, oh, my head. Um, I did, uh, I did my best to try to use my Jedi powers to get them to, to show their hand on that when we were in the training with them. What one, of them. what one of the specialists did mention to me is that it could be that a larger district already has a lot of things they have to do. Right. In other cases, which I would put us in, there's, quite, you know, there's kind of been a 10-year lapse in a lot of people. Oh, I, amount. I understand. No, negotiate it. Okay. Yeah. And, and to add to that, we sat with ADE for about three, three and a half hours. It's based on need. And so we were encouraged by that. So the, the principles and, and the process has been very strategic to toward us get what we need to, to implement. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is, this is David Nigro. Uh, whatever the curriculum is chosen for uh, ASD and PDSD, which, um, will a new curricula be, or curriculum be chosen for ASB as well? I mean, in other, in other words, is the way that we're going to address uh, Correct. I mean, all, all of our schools are lacking a, a curriculum. So in kind of paralleling this with what we're doing with the two schools and improvement, that will qualify for the grant or it's too low for the AZ merit scores to be published? Both. It's, it's both. So we yeah. know the AZ merit score. Because and the if you have only one student in a particular grade level, it would be identifiable to that score as to who that, who that kiddo is. So but Comparable? Uh, to, to the, the results from ASD? In other words... Um it that um, Annette shared with you, the, the comprehensive data packet, um, there's the results in that pen Miller um, across the board. And with one other thing, with our behavior program, the behavior program is going to be um, one of the only co extra costs that we're going to have, like I said, that will be absorbed through Title I and IDEA funds, will be having those staff paying them for scheduling and, and so on. So the only additional cost that we're going to have to come up with, and like I said, we have it in those other two grants, will be the curriculum itself. Um, in the spreadsheet, it seems like it displays everything as just ASDB. It doesn't seem to distinguish between... ASB and ASD, is that, is that correct? Each of those schools has a separate uh, ENI, or, yeah, ENI, EIN number 
so they're all considered separate entities. Okay. Uh, BE, not not our right. Uh, understood. And when we're talking and we're writing another planning grant for PDSD because each of them qualified on their own, and the same thing with implementation. This is Mark Sims. Is there any? Uh, thought of extending these curriculum that that's a, an interesting question I would assume that the majority of the schools that we're working with uh, at the curriculum and I think some of the supports that we build on top of it for students who are curricula I think would be a huge asset to um, to all of our well would we be able to differentiate between corpus general knowledge or teaching blind kids how to go across the street and things like that. So the point would be that would apply to the co-op. DE is asking us to look into is in math and language arts. And so it's going to be based um, proven curriculum. And so when you, that's not something that is an allowable cost um, to purchase or um, enhance our programs with this particular period, it would seem outside of the grant there should be a pressing need to have a comprehensive curriculum given that you said that's not a question for you to answer. Actually, that's a discussion for us to have uh, amongst the board and amongst the administration. And uh, one thing to address this, you know, this grant isn't going to be a silver bullet for everything that we're about shoring up, how we're teaching English language arts mathematics and science. Uh, there's going to be a lot of other uh, curriculum won't be with this, these grant funds that we can't address them. Those would be, you know, things like IDEA funds uh, come to mind as to ways that we could. I get it. Thank you. Uh, perhaps, this is David Nigro, perhaps this is for uh, accommodations that uh, are included when they take the AZ merit exam. Yes. Yes. Any other questions? Thank you very much. That was wonderful to signing the application. Thank you. So Thank you. We're, we're going to go on to 5.01, introductory discussion of policies as listed on the agenda. I'm sorry, um, this is Sanat speaking. I don't think Maria Murphy is with us at this point. Item 5.03, information item, agency outputs privilege update. That has me as the person update. I'm still here. Okay. Would you like to? Oh, um, well, sure. Oh. Um, we have spoken to three are positives and there are concerns with all of them. Um, like if possible um, to discuss maybe more extensively in an executive session. That we would have to agendize for the next meeting. I'm sure that we need to agendize the executive session as opposed to vote to go into it in a pre-agendized uh, Item. Well, I, I believe that's already set up, uh, Mr. President. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Y yeah, if okay. we, yeah. So, so, so we can make a motion. Uh, and employment decisions uh, related there too. Okay. Somebody want to say? Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, um, ARS yes, uh, 38-431.03A1, the Board of Directors may vote to go into executive late to agenda item. Thank you.
Let me know when everybody's back. When you take this back. I'm here. By the way, we're going to have to do that motion outside of executive session. You actually can't have that motion in executive session, I believe. Okay, let me know when. Is everybody back on? Uh, we're back here. Motion that uh, we accept Aaron Granton as the preferred candidate for the ombudsman position. I second. This is 2K. Opposed? Right. Okay, thank you, everybody. And I very much appreciate the committee's work on this, and I think it's a great addition. Uh, and hopefully, frankly, that the ombudsman never has to be used. So uh, I very much appreciate that uh, work. Okay. Next to uh, both donations, as listed on the agenda. This is Sue Kayen. Great. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion moves. One, call to the public for a non-agenda item. None. Are there any items? There are none. There are none. Okay. Future meetings. This is Mike Mailer. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Well, it just says that we're going to have um, a, format, a retreat with the next uh, board meeting. So uh, people could schedule, hopefully, uh, the time to um, retreat. But go ahead, Mike. Um, thank you. Okay. Oh, speaking. sure. I'll go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Speaking, I'm just confirming that you're requesting a retreat immediately after the March 1st board meeting. Can we go ahead. Of the curriculum as, and the grant. I'll sharpen that with you more, Annette. Uh, you and I can interact about that. Okay. Um, I believe that based on some constituent feedback, along with information presented by Reichman, to prepare uh, analysis of the feasibility for P uh, PDSD to expand an LSL and possibly kindergarten and first grade for next school year, the 1819 school year, um, and perhaps look at a plan how in discussion and training and um, things of that nature to take a look at the feasibility of, of having a classroom um, for kindergarten, if not kindergarten and first grade. Um, for with, with the retreat, right? Either open discussion or the retreat. Yeah. Any other topics people would like covered? This is in. I move to this meeting. Do we have a second? <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your efforts and have a great evening.
Let me know when everybody's back. I'm here. By the way, we're going to have to do that motion outside of executive session. You actually can't have that motion in executive session, I believe. Okay, let me know when. Is everybody back on? Uh, we're back here. Motion that uh, we accept Aaron Granton as the preferred candidate for the ombudsman position. I second. This is Sue Kay. Opposed? Okay, thank you, everybody. And I very much appreciate the committee's work on this, and I think it's a great addition. Uh, and hopefully, frankly, that the ombudsman never has to be used. So uh, I very much appreciate that uh, work. Okay. Next to uh, both donations, as listed on the agenda. This is Sue Kayan. Great. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And a motion moves. One, call to the public for a non-agenda item. None. Are there any there, items? There are none. There are none. Okay. Future meetings. This is Mike Mayer. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Mike. Well, it just says that we're going to have um, a retreat with the next uh, board meeting. So uh, people could schedule, hopefully, uh, the time to um, retreat. But go ahead, Mike. Um, thank you. Okay. So oh, sure. I'll go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Speaking, I'm just confirming that you're requesting a retreat immediately after the March 1st board meeting. Did we go ahead. Of the curriculum as, and the grant. I'll sharpen that with you more, Annette. Uh, you and I can interact about that. Okay. And, um, I believe that based on some constituent feedback, along with information presented to Reichman, to prepare uh, an analysis of the feasibility for P uh, PDSD to expand an LSL and possibly kindergarten and first grade for next school year, the 18-19 school year, um, and perhaps look at a plan how in discussion and training and um, things of that nature to take a look at the feasibility of, of having a classroom um, for kindergarten, if not kindergarten and first grade. Um, for with, with the retreat, right? Either open discussion or the retreat. Yeah. So, any other topics people would like covered? This is in. I move to the meeting. Do we have a second? <laughs> okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your efforts and have a great evening.